Hi guys, and welcome back to our FIFA 22 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. Now, in this episode, we need to get through transfer deadline day, where I won't lie to you, probably nothing is going to happen. We have a couple of players up for sale, which is the thing that I'm keeping my eye on the most. Uh, but that's going to be at the end of January 2023. Then, of course, the games in this episode, we do have the replay in the FA Cup fourth round, I think. Is it the fourth or the fifth? I think it's the fourth round against Burnley. And then we have games against Blackburn, West Brom, Stoke and Coventry in this month. Also, with it being transfer deadline day, I have had a look around at free agents and nothing really uh, actually improves our team, apart from one player that would just be stupidly unrealistic, and that is David Silver. David Silver is currently 37 and rated 80, and I thought, maybe should I, shouldn't I? But then I just thought, no, it'd just be ridiculous. <laughs> it'd be stupid if we brought David Silver into the championship, regardless of his age, he's far too good for this league. But either way, we have had a couple of offers for both Sirkin and Huggins. Now, Huggins is going nowhere anyway, because I really like him. He's been absolutely fantastic. Now, Sirkin, although he has been poor over the last two or three episodes, he's been really poor. His positional awareness is shocking. Look at that. He's only 20. He's rated 76. He's gone up by five already, and we're only sort of halfway through the season. He's going to be absolutely fantastic, rating-wise anyway. So I just want to be a little bit more patient with him, even though he has been poor, like I say, performance-wise. I'm going to be more patient with him because he's going to end up being, you know, rated, you know, mid 80s uh, in a couple of seasons, which is absolutely mad. So I'm going to keep hold of him. We have an offer of like five, six million, which is a great amount, but in the long run, there's no point in us getting rid of him. And the Huggins offer was like two or three million, which is just never going to happen. So we do have a couple of players up for sale. I think uh, Hawks is one, uh, Ellis Taylor, and Winchester are the other ones. So just to get those off the books, to give us a bit of a clean slate, that'd be really, really helpful. Uh, Hoffman offer has been withdrawn. I didn't realise we had an offer for him. Hume, uh, offer of 2.6 million. We're not going to even entertain that. I like our fullback situation at the minute. We've got two really good fullbacks per position. And it looks as though the transfer window is going to end without us receiving any offers for the players we do have up for sale currently, which isn't the end of the world. It's just, of course, we're a little bit unhappy because likes of Winchester, Hawks and Ellis Taylor, they're not getting game time, are they? So they're the only players within the entire squad that are getting slightly upset. But, um, you know, not, not too bad, but they're the only players that kind of tip the scale of the uh, squad morale a little bit. So transfer deadline day is over and we're going to be going into the replay of the FA Cup fourth round against Burnley at Turf Moor. So this is the team we're going to be going with. It is a second string squad because the first time we played Burnley in the last episode, we played so, so well. It's probably our best performance of the entire episode and it was with our second string. So I'm giving them another go here. We have Skull and Lowe up top as well, which I don't think I've tried out so far because Lowe can play as a striker as well. So there's a lot of pace there with Bark on the wings as well with Gooch on the other side. Can we cause Burnley enough problems and maybe cause an upset here at Turf Moor? Let's get into it. And it has just been announced that this is our 100th game in charge of Sunderland, which is amazing. It was weird to see him on the pitch there, all suited and booted, chatting with the players. But even so, here we are. It is a night under the lights at Turf Moor. It's a historic ground. I've been there myself a good few times. And away we go. Come on. Luke O'Neill, can you spread the plate? Yes, he can. And it is Josh Key now. He loves getting down this side here. Can we get to the byline? Yes, you can. Get it across goal if you can. It's a ball whipped in. Oh, it's tipped the crossbar, actually. Really close there to doing the keeper. What a ball that is for Denver Hume. Can he maybe put it down the line now? Yes, he can. For Barker. Into Scarlett. Can he twist and turn? Yes, he can. Can he spread the play as well? That's a lovely ball there. Get it in the box. He can. Surely Gooch. Oh, he nearly gets on the end of it. What a start this has been for us. Corner. Gucci is going to take it. Can we get ahead on it towards Jamal Lowe? It's flicked in. It's still in the box. Oh, my God. How aren't we winning this game? Get the first, get the first. Look at the pace of Willis. Go on, son. And there goes the half-time whistle. Nil-nil, but we've dominated large parts of this game. They've had their threats out wide. But other than that, it's us that are really starting to press them. Can we maybe get a goal in this second half? Get the first, get the first, get the first. Well in. Jesus Christ, close moment there. But now it is Lyndon Gooch. Don't lose the ball, don't lose the ball, don't lose the ball. Keep going. That'll do. Well played, Lyndon. Well played. I'm bringing off Dan Neal. I'm bringing on Elliot Embleton. A little bit more creativity, plus he's picked up a bit of a knock as well, has Dan Neal. Now here is Elliot Embleton, can he spread the play? Yes he can, towards Key, tries to knock it in towards the man, finish! Oh it's a save! Best chance of the game, our only real chance of this game. Oh that was gorgeous play as well, what a chance. Come on, come on, force him into a mistake, force him into a mistake. No, here we go. Please no, just blow the whistle ref, blow the whistle, they're starting to push a little bit here. It is extra time, thank god it doesn't go straight to penalties in this competition. We need that little bit more time, we're not penetrating that defence enough. 
We're getting that wide and dominating in the middle, but we cannot get in behind that defence. They sit far too deep. We're just going to start striking from range and trying to test Pope in goal. Get the first, get the first envelope. Well played. That's what I'm talking about. Come on now. Spread the play, spread the play. Lovely pass there. Now it is Jamal Lowe. Help him, help him, help him. Make me, make me, make me. There we go. Big touch, big touch. Go on, Gooch, go on, Gooch, go on, Gooch. Get the ball in the box. It's miles offside. Oh, and it's going to... Thank God. If that fell for Skull, it was offside anyway, but it's nearly an own goal. What a ball it is for Denver Hume. We need some help here. He does find his man. And again, he's passing to the wrong man. It's Jamal Lolo. It's in. It's an absolute beauty from Jamal Lowe in the first half of extra time. Get in. And the crowd are going crazy. Jams on. He runs down to celebrate with his players. The Sunderland fans are going mental. I can't believe that. What a gorgeous strike. Beautiful ball from Hume. He's flicked on there. He's passing to the wrong man. Neither of the players knew what they were doing. Jamal Lowe takes the responsibility, picks it up, and he's absolutely buried it. It's the least we deserve. It really is. You know, last episode we played shocking throughout. We're picking up draws, picking up losses. But in this game, we've dominated. I don't think they've had a shot. I really don't think they have. And it's 1-0. Come on, lads. Half time. I have extra time. Just hold on to it, boys. Please, just hold on to it. Don't mess this one up like you did in the first encounter with them. Go on, get the first. Get the first one in. Oh, no, it's still near the box. Oh my god, thank god. I was just saying they haven't had a shot pretty much all game. And that was a close call. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. He's on side as well. Get across to him, get across to him. Oh no, Willis has missed the ball completely. And they free the ball. Get away, get away, get away. Holy shit. Willis, what are you doing there? So completely missed the ball. But there we go, we are through. Oh my god. We've dominated the whole game. And they had two incredible chances in that second half of extra time, but we're through to the next round. It is an FA Cup upset. Get in! But now, after that crazy game in the FA Cup against Burnley, we will be quick in this game against Blackburn in the Championship as they are 10th in the league. As you can see, there is a reminder of the table in the Championship. We are currently five points away from the top two, which isn't completely unthinkable. With a decent run of form, we can definitely catch up with Southampton and Crystal Palace, but their goal difference is just so, so superior to ours. But let's quick sim this game against Blackburn. We will be going first team for this one, first string, and we get a 3-0 win. Low comes on as well at half-time. He gets himself another goal in this episode. Diaku, who else? Diaku gets himself a double, which is absolutely fantastic. This is a great episode so far. This is a great episode. I said this at the beginning of the last one, didn't I? And then it ended up being horrible. But now we will be welcoming West Brom to the stadium of light. As you can see, we're still five points behind Crystal Palace, who are currently in second. West Brom are in sixth, trying to solidify their place within their playoff places. And this is the team that we're going to go with. It's pretty much full strength, our first team. But Denver Hume is going to come in for Sirkin. He was brilliant against Burnley. And low, I have to reward players who are in form. So he will be replacing Greenwood. Lowe's been excellent over the last couple of games. And he obviously scored that beauty against Burnley as well. So low and Stewart up top, you know, big and little, you know, quick and slow. Even though Stewart isn't too slow, but you know what I mean. It's uh, It could be a pretty decent dynamic up there. They do have five across the back pretty much, West Brom, which could prove to be a bit of a nightmare, but let's get into it. And here we are, back in the league. And it is Dan Garner on this left side against Huggins. That's what I'm talking about. It's class, that lad. It's class. Come on, can we break away? Can we get a breakaway here? Go on, I can see Jamal Low. Just send him, he's rapid. Go on, get there first if you can. Oh, Neil, come on, referee. He's taking him down, man. Doesn't give anything. Otherwise, he probably would have got away. One-on-one with the keeper. Go on, Diaku. Go on, Diaku. Keep it in. There we go. Neatly done it. It's Diaku. That's a great ball. And in fact, oh, it's Stewart with a volley. It's a good save at the near post. Dembele with a corner. Can we get Sanderson with the header in? Oh, Ross Stewart. And they've cleared it away. Only just as far as Diaku. He got some brilliant control there, and it is Bolly Mumba now on the edge. Can he try and slip his man in? He's tried to. Is he onside? He is onside! And it is Jamal Lowe! It's horrendous defending from West Brom. I actually pressed the through ball by accident thinking, oh shit, it's offside. But he isn't, and he's absolutely smashed it past the keeper to get himself another goal to his talent. Yeah, he's just about maybe onside there. That is horrendous defending, it has to be said. But we're in the lead, early doors. Come on! Oh no, oh no, it's really good plays from West Brom. It's a little bit like the last episode at Southampton, you know, when they play it around so long and you can't get the ball off him. You can just feel that something's going to happen. But they've been a bit dangerous here. Oh, they made a right mess of that pass as well. A real mess of it, and it is the Aku now. There's a man in the middle. It is heading towards Jamal Lowe. Can he get there? Yes, he can. Jamal Lowe, it's a great save. 
Can Ross Stewart hug it back in? Yes, he can. Mumba! Oh, and it's a save. Come on, lads. We're being ruthless up top today. Oh, no. Come on. Get it away. Get it away. Get it away. Here we go. Here comes a passing move again. Oh, my God. I think that may have just brushed the top of the net in there. He's got a rifle of an effort as Phillips. Needs to keep an eye on him. Here is Diaki now on the turn. Well played. Sent him, sent him. There we go, it is. On your deco. One more time onto Ross Stewart. Can he maybe get amongst the goals? Yes, he can! It is an absolutely beautiful strike from Ross Stewart, the Loch Ness Drogba, right into the top left hand corner. This is more like it. Not like the shower of shite we saw in the last episode. This is more like it. On your deco. One more time because the defender got sucked away from Ross Stewart. It's a great strike. It's 2 0 right on the stroke half time. Get in. And there goes half time whistle. And what can I say? It's been an absolutely perfect half. A couple of decent efforts from West Brom, but they haven't troubled us too much. And Jamal Lowe, he's been a revelation in this episode. Greenwood, Barker and Scarlett are all going to come on for the final half an hour. We're winning 2-0. We've been brilliant. May as well give some lads some much needed and deserved game time because our second string and first string squad are doing well at the minute. Barker now, it's lovely. And again, look at the runs we're making now. With this new system, I love the runs we're making. It might not come to a goal, which it hasn't. But the runs we're making in behind now, we're just flooding them. And they can't deal with it at all. It's 4 4 2. Players getting in behind. Every time we get forward, there's so many bodies. Don't get me wrong, everyone's knackered. They're absolutely exhausted. That's why we need to use subs more. But we force them into errors. And we get so many bodies to run in behind the opposition defence that we have so many options. Get away, get away. Oh, it's a good ball. Great chance for them. It's offside. It's offside. I can see the flag. Jesus Christ. I was just saying how well we've been doing. It's nearly a moment there, and it's Phillips again, who's been really good for West Brom so far. Right, get it away, just get it away, get it away. That'll do. And there goes the whistle, 2-0. It's a brilliant victory here at the stage of light. And what a performance, like I keep saying. This system, I'm starting to get used to it a bit more now. You need to be a little bit patient at times, but as soon as you get into a certain area in the final third, you start getting bodies. Both wingers are obviously getting in behind. Both strikers are staying central and getting behind. So you've got so many options when you're trying to break forward. But going backwards, that's where it can get a little bit tricky because once you've got so many players committed going forward, you're left a little bit empty in the back. So you need to make sure you take your chances. In this game, we did 2-0. But now we are going to be taking on Stoke City away from home. They are currently in 12th. I will play that game. And if we do have a look, we have been drawn against QPR in the next episode in in the FA Cup. It could have been a much worse draw with no disrespect to them, but of course we know how many massive teams are in this competition. So we will take on Stoke away from home, then we'll probably quick sim the game against Coventry to round off this episode. But for now, we do go to the Bet365. And this is the team I'm going to go with for this one. I have actually dropped uh, I've dropped Ross Stewart and I've brought Skull in there just for pure pace reasons. And I think that he deserves some game time as well because it's hard to juggle the strikers when they're all doing so well, particularly with Lowe, who's just shown up out of nowhere in this episode and done amazing as a striker. So that is a side we are going to be going with. I'm going to put Embleton in the middle as well because he really does need some game time. So let's get into it. And here we are. Of course, it is absolutely pouring it down away from home against Stoke City. It is a cold day at Stoke. Can we continue our brilliant run of form with Skull and Lowe up top in this one? Come on lads. Oh god, I can feel a hissy fit coming along already on this left side. Huggins, oh it's been turned far too easily there to the edge of that box. Why is no one breaking him down or closing him down should I say? And we managed to get it away. It is Skull that now spreads it onto Lowe. Can he find his man? He does. It is Diaku. Go on, let's get a ball in towards Lowe. He's headed it. I wish he didn't. I wanted him to bring it down, but he's headed it a bit too early for my liking. But still a showing of what we are capable of on the counter-attack. Spread the play. Spread it. There we go. Huggins in towards Embo. Turns his man. Beautifully done there by Elliot Embleton. And he strikes it from distance. Takes a deflection and nearly finds its way in. Ball over the top now. It's Fox on this left side. Go to him. Go to him. No, it's a good chance. And cleared away. Oh, my God. He had no idea what the hell was going on then. Free kick here. For Stoke to get it in their box. Headed, flicked on, and it's straight at Hoffman, luckily. Look at that, though. Come on, let's counter, let's counter, let's counter. Come on, Sirkin, move. I've set you to overlap, and it is Sirkin. Go on. Well played, lad. Get the ball in the box. You can see him on there. Take a touch. Strike it. Oh, it's in the post. Oh, what a chance that was. Oh, no, it's a good chance here. Oh, good, no foul, no foul, no foul. It's a save from Hoffman. Come on. Great chance now on the stroke half time for Stoke. Well in Huggins. It's so good, I'm telling you. That should be the half time whistle. It is. 
Huggins, I'm telling you though, he is so, so good. I think for his rating as well, it really doesn't show how good he actually is. He times everything perfectly. He's managed to get those little tackles in just when they look like they're about to get the ball in the box or strike the ball. It just nicks him really quickly and it's great going forward as well. Oh no, we're absolutely all over the place at the back here. Luckily, we've actually managed to judge it correctly this time. Can we break? It is Diaku. Keep going, son. Keep going. Keep going. I can see Scarlett in there. Towards him. Can he get there first? He can't. Come on, lads. I might have to bring Stuart on because this is shit. Oh, come on. Come on, Hoffman. Come on, Hoffman. Get there first, man. Great chance. Get it away. Oh, my God. That is shocking defending. It's been coming, though, in this second half. Stoke have been better than us. 100%. Hoffman, why is he so tight to his line? He takes so long to come out. We don't win the header. Francic gets the goal for Stoke. Ten minutes to go. Can we maybe get some kind of break? Because this second half, we've been shocking. On your deacon out. Insert Luke O'Neill on the edge. Flicks in towards low. He does finish. Is he onside? Oh, surely that's offside. Of course it is offside. Five minutes to go. This second half has just gone to shit, hasn't it? And there it goes. The final whistle. It's a defeat. Which we really, really didn't need at this point in the season. But we definitely didn't deserve it. That second half, we were absolutely horrendous. We were really, really poor. Couldn't string a pass together. And I just think that little bit of luck as well didn't quite go our way. But Stoke deserve it. 1-0. And after that game, as you can see, we are still in third place. We've almost sort of solidified pretty much our playoff place. Which is absolutely amazing, by the way. I forget that we've just came up from League One this season. We've played really well. We've had some... Topsy turvy games at times. We have, we have one episode where we're amazing and we win all the games. We score loads of goals and then we'll have another one where we can't score to save our life and we're drawing and losing. But we still somehow managed to find ourselves in third place. Just six points behind Southampton as well. But we are going to be ending this episode with a quick sim game against Coventry. We will go full strength for this one. And we win 2-0. It is Diaku at the double again. I feel like every time we win in Quicksum Games is Diaku who gets the goals. But that's a lovely way to end the episode, even if it wasn't me that controlled the players. So this is how the league table looks at the end of the episode. We are in third place, as we know. Crystal Palace have a game in hand. They still have the game to play, so Southampton have jumped over them and are now top of the pile. Then Brentford are six points behind us. So as I mentioned earlier, we've pretty much solidified our place within the playoffs. QPR in fifth and Swansea in sixth as well. Now the bottom... Who do we have? We have Barnsley, Ipswich and Chef Wednesday all in the danger zone. But that'll be it guys. If you have enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care. Stay jamming. <laughs>